All right, people love it, but me no like it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know where to begin. I mean, the script is so bad that there's nothing you can do with your casting or direction to even bring it back. I mean, it's a cliched story, uh, you know, I'm just, I, I don't know what to say. Maybe you guys think differently, but, uh, you know. This, this is the two opposite ends of the spectrum. <laughs> I, I love this spot. I, I, uh, I can't wait till she comes out with her movie. <laughs> uh, and there was brand identification all the way through it. You got it very clearly that they had all these different flavors. Uh, and and uh, I thought it was great uh, from a brand standpoint. And uh, I thought it was terrific. Yeah, I feel the same way. That was great casting. Don't look at us! Come on! I convinced you guys. It was a good commercial. Uh, you... No, I feel the same way. It reminds me of dating you, Kelly. Oh, it's a triumph! <laughs> I mean, this kind of thing actually does occur. I've seen it. <laughs> so, I... Same thing. I mean, it reinforced the brand, it reinforced the product, and also it was another user-generated uh, content spot. Which I thought was which I thought was great. Sometimes, in in the case of the two good spots, the the uh, consumers actually seem to get the brands a little bit better than the people that are producing the spots for less money uh, in terms of production costs. So, what what you didn't see at the end of this one was uh, the guy was actually behind the counter going, I'm okay. <laughs> 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 I, I just, it wasn't funny for me. I don't know why. It doesn't even seem like that's who eats Doritos. It's like middle aged, kind of homely people. <laughs> I don't know, it just felt like wrong for the Super Bowl somehow. Um, if you're going to use sex, it maybe should be more sexy. 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 <laughs> <laughs> that's what no, this is not really sexy. Well, what did you think of the, uh, the URL um, used there? I mean, I think. One thing for me, when you see a URL, it's got to be something I'm going to remember because that was quite long. And I don't know, do you remember what the URL was? It, Actually, it was... the URL was a problem, and going to their site to watch the uh, spot was a problem. I, I tried it there several times over the course of a uh, 24 hour period, and I couldn't get it to pull. So they were an example of even though they did this great thing with the user generated piece, they didn't execute well. They didn't tell the look. computer guys. Yeah. Yeah. So that was that was. Well, that wasn't the really issue. Like that was the production. Like those guys are starting their own production company. So that was and Doritos agreed to air the ads exactly like they were created. And so, right. But so Doritos had them site, on their. The, right. Doritos had the ability to control sure. the server that it was on. Yeah. They, she was from Southern California. The girl right. that developed those. What did you see if you went to snackstrongproductions.com? What was there? I think, wasn't that the woman's site, or no, was that Doritos' site? I don't remember. I think it's the woman's site, because I think that was part of the contractual, it was done through jump cut. Um, and so they agreed that exactly how it was filmed, it would go on the Super Bowl. I see. So I think they were smart enough to put their URL in there, sure. so if it got high enough, they would get the trap. They're probably the big one. So. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I saw that, I had no idea again that that was consumer created. And, um, you know, I think a lot of people out there, you know, I, I guess the vast majority of the, the public liked it, you know, it was TiVo like crazy. And, and we do these things you know, to communicate to the public out there. But looking at it strictly as a creative director for an ad agency, without having any context around it, I just don't think it was a very good spot. Follow me, let's 
Definitely covered all the demos on that one. <laughs> I, uh, I kind of like this spot. All right. <laughs> you know, you know, like and, you, and, you, and you're part of America. I feel like it could have been executed much better. I thought they were missing some songs that I would have maybe thought about. I thought some of the vignettes were kind of lame. Um, but there was something really charming, the race car driver singing like uh, the hip hop song. I thought that was really good. Um, so, I, you know, and then if you're Chevrolet and you're trying to kind of be the heartbeat of America and that kind of positioning and you prove it through the, the vast cross-section of American life that, you know, enjoys the cars and people have written songs about them, it's kind of a, it was going to be done sooner or later by some brand that's been referenced in a million different songs and they did it and they did an okay job. Yeah, I, I like I liked the song references too. I thought it was for, you know, America, maybe not for California. Uh, but for it was a, definitely an American thing. I, I did like you, Paul. Uh, you know the thing is over, and I say, wait a minute. Where's Don McLean driving his Chevy to the levee? And <laughs> where's Where's Stevie Wonder's Chevrolet? Yeah. Going to shore. I, I personally didn't care for the commercial. I thought it was kind of boring. <laughs> um, I saw it. I'm like, okay, fine. It didn't make me want to go buy a Chevrolet or anything. It was, just, it was there. Yeah, American Idol, maybe. I like the spot. I mean, it was just pure love for the brand, and I like the music. In fact, I was just asking these guys on the panel, who is it that's singing that last song? Um, so it was it was good. No problem. Um, I don't really know what to say about it. <laughs> I like when you drive down the highway and you see a guy in a Chevy and he's got the sticker on the back of the guy peeing on the Ford symbol. So I think that kind of, <laughs> kind of sums up that spirit, maybe. <laughs> Next. What I find strange about this commercial is that they would advertise a product based on bogus science with sort of bogus scientists. Just seems very strange. And then like the chief scientist kind of tragic, kind of half beard without the mustache. I don't think anyone here has one of those. I just find that really strange for, for, for a facial hair thing. It's like, well, who shaved him? It's, it's all messed up. <laughs> it's, a 15, it's a 15 in a world of 30s and 60s. Uh, for for the Super Bowl, uh, that all I can figure is they bought it at the. It's it's been run before. We've seen it before. They bought it at the last minute because it was cheap, uh, and I hope it was cheap for them because I think they wasted their money. <laughs> <laughs> I love no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, I was this commercial shocked me that at this day and age, in this day and age we are only at four blades. I thought by now. <laughs> <laughs> the, the only thing with the 15 is that more than 50% of that 99 million were in their target market, probably. So I think it was the best as far as just a media purchase overall, but I think, I can't believe the spot made it into the top 10 if it truly did. And I thought that even though uh, there were five voiceover messages mentions and two images. Um, I thought that the production, it, it, I had to watch it several times in order to count that up and figure out that that was going on. I didn't get it the first time I saw it, I didn't get it the second time I saw it. So not the greatest spot, but I think a really good media buy. <laughs> well, I think the Super Bowl usually would feature your best commercials. And again, this one has been playing before. 
So I found it not very special. You're going to waste that much money. Spend that much money. <laughs> Why waste it on something that's old? Yeah. I'm not buying the four blades. I'm a three blade guy. <laughs> you know, and the way it was presented, it, you know, I'm incredulous. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, was, I was surprised that they, they played it before, but uh, it does come down to uh, economies and scale of whether or not they got a good deal at the last minute. You know, that's a great point. And you, you brought that up a few times. Um, I feel it's our God-given right as Super Bowl viewers that we deserve fresh new commercials. <laughs> you know, these spots that you saw through the NFL playoffs or you saw them all year long, it's like, what's the point of that? I mean, this is a coming out party, this is a venue, this is a big dance, this is a big spectacle. And to just throw up something you were in because somebody in a focus group said they liked it better than something else, I feel cheated. I feel cheated on a lot of them at the end. <laughs> I would say it was a lackluster year for commercials on the season. I think it was a Rex Grossman like performance. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. I agree, and I thought about that a lot, and I already made this comment about integration. So, do people need to wait until Q1 before they, you know, come out with their really great stuff? Say that again. Yeah. Do people need to wait until Q1 before they come out with their really great stuff, their really big message? I mean, Commercials cost a half a million to a million to develop, and you don't want to wear them out. You could save one. I mean, there are actually studies that cite all kinds of stuff that if you have more than one spot in a campaign, it's more effective and you get additional viewership and stuff. So you just you design, you write, and shoot, and produce something specifically for the Super Bowl, and you hold that one back. So the campaign could break earlier, mm -hmm. but you're holding back that kind of little tasty treat for us viewers right. for the big game. And the big thing that I thought was left out this year is overarching for the brand. I kept looking for it in just about everybody's spots and I only saw it. Three? Three what? or four? Uh, like over, over, I mean, looking at the spot and being able to tell who the spot is. <coughs> four, you know, sitting there with my little notepad during the Super Bowl right. during this party Most trying people to figure don't out view what it, it is and I can't figure it out. <laughs> the first time, so I just, you know. the biggest missed opportunity after they uh, asked Manning where he was going and he said Disney World is they didn't switch to Grossman and say want to get away <laughs> <laughs> you know the other observation since all the T-Vote spots it's like what happened to Budweiser you know why how when did Bud Light become the beer of America and, and good old Budweiser got kicked to the curb somewhere along the way I feel uh, I feel chipped on that front too impressive <laughs> <laughs> Um, so let's open it to the floor. Let's, I'm sure there's a number of questions. I was really appalled at how few of these not only didn't register the brand, but no benefit. Uh, you know, FedEx ground is fast. That was that was solid, uh, and the rest of them. I mean, it was really vacuous in terms of giving me a reason to buy. Bad marketing. I, I tend to think the Super Bowl is, is more of an awareness medium. You get the name out there. And I think it works best. But yeah, I was wondering why Bud uh, did like seven spots in there. It's got to be like market domination. We have to own that that market. So let's let's show up and be there. But if if you go back a couple of years when uh, GoDaddy, I didn't particularly like the spot, but they were an unknown brand and, and they did a pretty outrageous spot, and then suddenly. Uh, they were on the lips of uh, a, a lot of people. And I think that's where using the Super Bowl is a, a very effective media. media. Um, I'm, I'm not sure how it works with, with some of these other uh, uh, spots that are, or, or brands in the middle, but I think it works, works great if, if you have pretty low awareness. It seems like some of the big winners uh, during the Super Bowl were the controversial spots, like the Snickers spot got a lot of controversy, and now the jam spot with the robot has come under fire from uh, anti-suicide groups. And Paul Bettables. <laughs> and uh, there was one other spot that, oh, that rock spot also came under fire for being too violent and stuff. And you really have to wonder if that's not the real goal. If people are still talking about your spot three days later, it seems like a huge return on investment, even if it is controversial. Do you have those videos? Can you see the, uh, the GM one and the sneakers? I, I don't have all of the spots on there. 
But you can see them online. Go on YouTube and search and you'll find them. So. <coughs> other questions? Or, yeah, the other questions? One the best kind of that. Um, I really like the FedEx commercial. Uh, I feel dumber than most because I just got the IMP part. <laughs> <laughs> but what I'm wondering is the, wall. the commercial party, uh, commercials like those, they start to take on a life of their own with that because when they play that norm with that, uh, that spot run uh, continually now, or is that one shot deal? Actually, I think that's part of a campaign, oh. so it'll, it'll probably continue to run now. You know, that's okay. You launch it there and then roll it out. It's better every time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's got to get each character. Yeah. FedEx did another spot during the Super Bowl you probably saw with the, it's on the moon. And it was a big bombastic, big special effects mm -hmm. spot. And I don't think it was anywhere near as you know, interesting or, or funny as that spot. So it kind of shows the difference. If I'm looking back at commercials and I'm not just looking at the Super Bowl, but I'm looking at what I've seen in, in uh, the television media, um, when I'm looking at late 90s, I'm looking at aspiration. People are wearing sex in the city and um, gorgeous shoes, beautiful clothing, the, you know, the hair, the image. And then you're looking at these spots, and except for the Chevrolet, um, the Chic commercial, you're looking at sort of the reverse sort of polar negative of that. You don't want to be that guy. Uh, you don't want to be Mr. Turkey Neck. You don't want to be the oddball out. Who um, says you don't want to? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, there are those exceptions. Prosperity. <laughs> it's a big turnoff for most that, that's a that's a that's a direct <laughs> function of comedy. I mean, aspirational is one way to go, and that's one way to, to get people excited about a brand. Um, it's usually a little sh more shallow and image driven and glitzy and not very deep. Um, if you're going to do comedy, I think that's when you're going to find more interesting characters, more offbeat people. Um, you know, role reversal situations, and even you know, spots where the not perfectly attractive checkout person is in the middle of this kind of exciting sexual moment. So that, I mean, that's, that's, that's how you get to comedy. So I think that I applaud that. I'd much rather see stuff that makes me smile and laugh than tries to sell me an image and a lifestyle that I really don't care about. I think that um, the negative stuff can work in broadcast if you've seen it several times. The more we've said this, each of us collectively, the things that you see a number of times and then you begin to get they warm, you warm to them, and they actually have uh, a little bit more frequency, so they don't wear out as quickly. That's exactly counter to the online world. If you run negative keywords, if you run negative commentary, negative blogs, whatever it is, you won't get, uh, your CTR will drop, your, uh, uh, both for your, your page and your ads, and so, I think the challenge of marketers and creatives and brand managers, account people, is to bring this thing together. And I think this year it was incredibly negative. I thought the Super Bowl spots were incredibly negative. To, um, um, I mean, I, I think it was shameful. And I think the challenge is to bring it back together. So it's both funny because I really want it to be funny during the Super Bowl. I think it should be. If there are five or ten spots, I think it should be something different. I think it should be a departure, and you can make fun of your buddy, and you should, because that's the context of it. But it shouldn't be so negative, and it felt way off the mark. You know, you know who showed up with really positive spots we didn't talk about was Coca-Cola. I really, really love the. They took Grand Theft Auto, the kind of like yeah. poster child for negativity and violence and sex. And, and, you know, the delinquent box behavior, all, all the things that Dante enjoys. Um, and they made that, and they made that, they turned that, made that optimistic and positive. And then the, the other one is the, the little happiness, the way the bottle is created and delivered. And um, I think both of those um, deserve to be in the top ten, and it's kind of appalling they're not. And how would you compare the Coke ads as a follow-up to Pepsi's message? Do uh, I much ads? prefer that. Pepsi is... I mean, they're always playing the, we're trying so hard to be cooler, younger, and hipper that it gets pathetic, I think. I think Coca-Cola has realized an inherent truth about the product. Their brand stands for kind of like feel good. And if you can embrace that, which is a hard thing to do, and not end up with a Hallmark commercial and something overly mawkish or sentimental, and something that's actually interesting makes me smile, that's hard to pull off. And they, and they did a really good job of it, I think. Yeah, I think those are some of the best Coke spots I've seen in, in years. You know, they, they really sort of tapped into, uh, you know, the social phenomenon of uh, the grand theft and just turned it on it on its ear. I mean, that's a hugely negative game. And, uh, you know, I love what they did. 
with it. I mean, the animation was was uh, really engaging, and, and I'm sorry to see that they weren't in the top ten either. Well, you, well, there was actually one other Coca-Cola commercial. Do you call that one off him? The Black History Month. I think that they should be applauded for doing that. I think it was uh, terrific, and it was terrific to see that they had the guts to not only do the most incredible production values, but a very minimalist spot, too. And I think that came off very well. Absolutely. I mean, the first time I think I could recall that there was a company that recognized Black History Month during Black History Month with a, a spot in Super Bowl. Interesting. It's not always in February. Yeah. Yeah. Questions? I'm curious to know um, which among the commercials shown during Super Bowl you liked and which like worked well for the brand. Uh, I liked the FedEx spot. I think for somehow it just it, it really had the only reaction. It, really got, it got the only reaction for me that really is required of a Super Bowl commercial, which it made me laugh and I remembered it. And I was probably paying more attention to it than most people would, but. Uh, you know, I don't. I don't think. You know, I think there's a danger of reading too much into what these all mean as a group, or what what this is saying about marketing or, or a nation or anything else. It's just kind of 30 seconds of kind of fun engagement. Yeah, FedEx, Coca-Cola. We yeah, did, Coca -Cola. did a great job. Uh, I'm sick of Budweiser and their you know, random tricks and uh, <laughs> critters and violence and sophomore humor, but. You know, it plays well and they sell beer, so I, you know, I can't criticize too much, I suppose. I kind of found the Snickers store like to be pretty funny. I wasn't a fan of it, and I, I saw this. It, it was fun. And one commercial that didn't make the top 10 list I kind of liked was the uh, Budweiser commercial when they're driving, and the lady says, but he has an axe. And, and oh, yeah. what's wrong with that? Yeah, and then he has a chainsaw. Yeah. I thought that was a good commercial. <laughs> <laughs> it was another feel-good commercial. Yeah. <laughs> Community coming together, and strangers helping out the Samaritan, really. Yeah, I, I, I thought about this right after the Super Bowl, and I, I thought, what were my, and I didn't know at that time that one was the most expensive and one was the least expensive, but my favorite two spots that kind of stuck with me were the, the, uh, the Coke Grand Theft Auto. I thought it was just magnificent. Uh, and and the uh, and the Doritos the twelve ninety nine or whatever it was uh, Doritos crash uh, and uh, those were my two faves. <laughs>